How's it going everyone, Toonster here. I usually don't do videos about developer updates, but I did see there was something here that is to my best interest. I haven't looked at all the update, but if you saw the title and you also saw my distortion video, you know that I'm not a fan of the perk. That video has come to be like my most ratioed video, which I think is really funny, but I'm gonna be going over all of the developer update notes today and be giving my thoughts on them. I've only seen the distortion change, so everything else I have not seen, so let's go. So the first change, which is a little major, it's nothing too crazy you can now mori the final survivor i always thought mori's were a cool thing in the game that didn't get to be used or seen all that often so i kind of like that they're making it just a uh, completely base kit and also all the mori offerings now give you extra blood points for moriing so that's another little extra change it's a nice feature it's not gonna change the game at all like gameplay wise but i think it's cool uh teamwork power of two is getting some buffs it, now if you re-enter the range it's gonna restart uh, the timer for the effect and they also increase the range and they made it so that there's no cooldown and it won't deactivate if you lose a health state. Decent buffs, but again, I still think the perk's gonna be trash. Pretty much the exact same changes to teamwork collective stealth. Again, I don't think it's gonna be too good, but still, I guess it's cool that they're buffing these really, really bad perks. But again, it'll probably make them a little better, but nothing too crazy. Corrective action is getting a decent buff. It now applies to any survivor in eight meters, not a survivor that you're doing a generator or healing with. So now if you're on a generator and a survivor is healing near you and they fail skill check it's gonna it's gonna proc corrective action and also it makes failed skill checks become great skill checks instead of good skill checks perk is still garbage but cool change i guess they could honestly make the effect for this perk map wide and it would still suck so again decent buff but nobody's running corrective action inner focus is getting a bit of a buff you can now see the killer's aura for quite a bit longer it's actually double and they removed the range requirement for it too decent buff again i don't think inner focus is a really good perk but you know i still won't run a perk like inner focus but for the people that do run it which is actually surprisingly a good amount i see this perk used quite a bit so they're buffing that perk which which is good now we have the first interesting change we're gonna live forever gets quite a decent healing speed buff from 100 to 150 and their justification for this is that survivors aren't left in the dying state often so they wanted to make the perk more valuable which is fine i'm not sure i quite understand this next change though endurance effect no longer needs to be activated i don't know what that means so they added a cooldown for the endurance effect. So if you pick like two people up within a span of 30 seconds, only one of them gets endurance. That's fine. But I don't know what that first one means. If you could clarify or if you know in the comments, that would be great. Because endurance effect no longer needs to be activated. Yeah, I'm confused. Poised looks like it gets a buff. Uh, when you first start repairing a generator, see the killer's aura for six seconds. And they made it so I think the scratch marks last a bit longer too. That's a decent buff actually. It's not a bad perk now. It's going to be like what C tier instead of like D or F. So again, Decent change, actually. A really interesting change here is Blood Rush. So Blood Rush is basically becoming like DS and off the record. It's going to activate for 60 seconds after you've become unhooked. And it also has the same things as them where it deactivates from a conspicuous action and it also deactivates when the exit gets are powered. But the really interesting thing here is that the perk no longer heals you. So before, if you use Blood Rush, you would become broken for a bit, recover from the exhausted status effect, and then heal back up. I'm really mixed on this. I, I just don't know how it's gonna play out. It has a lot of potential, but a lot of people do like running Dead Heart as anti-tunneling, and this doesn't have that much synergy, because let's say you're getting chased, you use Dead Heart, and then you use a Blood Rush to get rid of the exhausted status effect. You still need to mend, so that's not gonna be all that good. But for perks like Lithe or Sprint Burst, actually, this has really good synergy with Sprint Burst now that I think about it. Because let's say you get unhooked and you immediately start sprinting. So you use your Sprint Burst. Then you use Blood Rush and your Sprint Burst comes back. You literally have Sprint Burst on demand. This has quite a bit of potential, actually. I might run this perk and see how good it might be. It might be really good now. But yeah, really interesting change. We're going to have to see how that one plays out. Quick Gambit is getting a chain. It's a buff and a nerf, but it, I think it's mostly a buff, to be honest. So now when you're getting chased you can see the auras of all other survivors that's already a really really good buff however it does add a nerf here where if you get hit um the perk activates for 60 seconds it has a 60 second cooldown i believe that's what that means then they reduced the repair speed bonus you give to others which i, I don't know if i explained quick game bit makes it so survivors doing generators near you do generators faster while you're being chased so now that re repair speed bonus is decreased however it has an unlimited range now so honestly i think this is mostly a buff it 
5% repair speed bonus to every survivor on the map when you're being chased. This is kind of too much if you ask me. I could be wrong. We'll have to see how this is like in the PTB. But my prediction is that this perk is going to be nasty good. Like really, really good. 5% 5 5 speed to everyone repairing generators while you're being chased and you can see their auras. Again, it does have a cooldown now. So maybe not. Maybe I'll be wrong. But it has a lot of potential. It could be a really good perk. Now, here's the one that obviously people might be mad about. People are going to be very mad about actually because that video kind of got ratioed but distortion no longer has tokens and instead deactivates once used until the next time you're chased it and then they increase the duration of the scratch marks and the aura hiding effect so now i actually really like this distortion doesn't have tokens so at the start of the match you might like uh use it to block lethal pursuer but then you have to go and get chased oh my god i love this change you're making distortion players play more aggressively to get their tokens before this it was you have to be in the terror radius to get the effect back sure you might have to get a little close to the killer but 32 meters which is most killers that's a lot distortion players could get their tokens back without being aggressive now you have to be much more aggressive to get your value out of this so I know a lot of people are going to be mad about this, but again, the perk is still going to be decent and I don't think it's a terrible change. But again, I'm obviously biased because I hated this perk. So I'm not going to even spend that much time. I'm not going to even spend that much time on this because they buffed the perk and then they also removed part of the perk. This perk was terrible. I don't know why they it, it should have just gotten a flat buff. So I don't I don't really care. Genetic limits gets a rework, which I think makes the perk much better. First of all, the perk is more simple. It's just like a single line of text. And now anytime a survivor loses a health state they suffer from exhaustion that's pretty decent actually i think more so that's and gonna be annoying to play against as survivor but that's a pretty decent change if you ask me so like anytime you're chasing a survivor and let's say they have dead hard or they haven't gotten to use live yet if you just hit them if they lose a health state it doesn't say hit with a basic attack if you are playing huntress or whatever if they lose a health state by any means they become exhausted so now they would have to stand still somehow or just walk for eight seconds throughout the chase to be able to use the ex um their exhaustion perk overall that's quite a i think that's a that's definitely a buff from what it was before uh leverage is getting a rework when a survivor performs an unhook their healing speed is reduced by mm. So when a survivor performs an unhook, their healing speed is reduced by 30, 40, 50% for 30 seconds. That's what? That's like literally the opposite of we'll make it. That's like we'll make it, but for killers. Uh, it's it's all right. I don't think anyone's going to run this, but it's decent. I think it's like CD tier, actually. It's not. Maybe if you're running some sort of anti-healing build on a killer, it, it might have some good synergy, but I still don't think that's all that good. Thwack getting a rework. Thwack now starts with three tokens. Gain one token upon hooking a survivor. When breaking a pallet or a breakable wall, consume one token and cause survivor with and cause survivor, not survivors, within 24 meters to scream and reveal their location. That's pretty good actually so you start with three and then when you hook a survivor you get more tokens it doesn't it doesn't give a maximum token amount so maybe you could just have well, what would be the max 15 because 12 hooks but like i guess 14 because if, if you hook 12 people they're all dead but that's not bad actually i kind of like that i might run that part it looks pretty cool i'm a little confused on this next change the machine learning change so does it only require one generator to activate now i'm kind of confused that might be it because they said they're trying to simplify it but i'm a little confused on what they mean here but i think that's a buff cool i guess i like that perk actually i think it's quite cool but no one ever gets to use it because it wasn't that good deathbound no longer has a distance required to activate so there's no minimum or required distance and deathbound no longer has a duration and said deactivates when the healer is hooked so now are they they're oblivious until they're hooked that's pretty decent actually um i still don't think it's gonna be a great perk but you know sure i'll take a deathbound buff it needed a buff so uh i'm cool with this zenshin tactics when a survivor Survivor is within six meters of a drop pallet within 16 meters of your location. Okay, so that pallet has to be within 16 meters of your location. And that survivor has to be within six meters of that pallet. Okay, a little confusing, but I think I got it. Their aura is revealed for six, eight, ten seconds. Is there no cooldown on this? That's actually really good. Zenshin Tactics was a decent perk for beginners, but you really had no reason to use it when you were an experienced player. It's basically windows of, of opportunity for killer, if you didn't know. You might not know because nobody wants this perk, but that is actually quite a
quite a strong effect. I think that's like a lot stronger than say like I'm all ears, for example. So that's pretty decent, actually. Ooh, dead man switch change. Let's see what it is. Now applies only to the first survivors who stop preparing a generator. It says first survivors. What does that mean? Like the first, I'm confused. Wouldn't it just be one survivor? And then they increase the duration of it. Ah, uh, that's probably a nerf. Like dead man switch was annoying. But if you ask me, they should have made the duration. I think the change is fine, but they should have made it like 60 seconds. They should have made it like a, a little bit more. Again, I, I don't know. I'm mixed about this. I'm mixed. Uh, we'll have to see. Blood Echo no longer has a cooldown. And then they... they <laughs> Like, okay, Blood Echo was not a good perk. You do not need to do a buff and a nerf. Just give it a straight buff. I don't know. Sure, whatever. It now no longer has a cooldown as if you're freaking hooking survivors like really fast. If you're playing a killer that like benefits from Blood Echo, like freaking Legion or something. Yeah, Legion gets a ton of down super fast. I don't know why they're not just giving this a flat buff. You don't need to reduce the duration, guys. It's it's not necessary. Hex Crowd Control gets a, a good change. It looks like here. The last three, four, five volts, which is... Uh, uh, which survivors rush vault are blocked by the entity so now there's five blocked windows or there's five windows that can be blocked at once that's good i that might seem strong at first but you gotta remember this is a hex perk hex perks are supposed to be strong because they can be turned off for the rest of the game now i am gonna be a bit concerned if they keep buffing hex perks and they don't change pentimento but that's a that's a that's a that's for a different video that's not for today but good change i like this really good buff for crowd control it's a rework but it's definitely definitely a buff predator gets a really good change when a survivor escapes the chase reveal their aura for six seconds this perk then goes on cooldown for 40 seconds that's not good, but it's much better than it was before. Just making scratch marks all all confusing. That uh, sometimes it made it worse because they don't appear higher up on walls. So that's a good change. I like that. It's also that's going to be decent for beginners, and it might be decent for a killer like Huntress, who uh, if you lose someone, you can see their aura, and then you can snipe them. It's not a horrible change. And I'm kind of peeping down on the list here. There's a skull merchant change, so let's pray it's good. Decreased hinder penalty when scanned by a drone to five percent was ten percent. The skull merchant no longer gains gains haste when scanning a survivor. Okay, more consistent movement speeds. Not bad. These two effects combine to create a huge speed difference in the killer survivor. Yeah, 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 we know. Reduce number of drone scan lines to one. Oh, so before you had like, I don't know how to do this. You had like the drone spinning and there was two lines. Is there only going to be one now? That's a pretty strong, that's a pretty strong nerf. Wow. And uh, drones are now always in their active state. I don't even know what that means, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't play skill much that much, but I guess there's no stealth mode now. They're always active. And drone scan lines are now invisible beyond 60 me. So they basically gutted skull merchant. That's, that's what it looks like here. The skull merchant is garbage now, but at least people won't complain about her. Um, A bit of a lazy change, but you know what? It's fine. I hate playing against killer so overall I i'm cool with this i don't skull for the longest time skull merchant had the highest kill rate not because she was good but because people just kept DCing against her yeah she was pretty frustrating to go against but yeah they kind of just gutted her bro i'm gonna be honest if you play skull merchant a rip gotta find a new killer hailbilly decreased time before overdrive starts to dissipate to eight seconds okay so overdrive now goes away faster okay decreased overdrive movement speed to that's yeah that's 1.5 meters that's quite a bit actually in terms of movement speed that is like what 30 40 percent i think uh decreased overdrive charges gained while revving and sprinting to 1.5 so now you get overdrive slower and uh, i mean i kind of liked billy like he was really strong after they made overdrive a good thing but he was also still kind of difficult i'm hoping this doesn't nerf him too much because i actually thought he was a really healthy killer for the game i know some people didn't like him uh that was not me i enjoyed playing against them because he was really challenging but also he had counterplay so hopefully this doesn't get him too much which i don't think it will overdrive is getting quite a few quite a few nerfs and now if you miss on the chainsaw it's like a little bit longer that's not going to be too noticeable a twins change and a skull merchant change at the same time jesus uh increase victor's cooldown when crushed to 20 seconds so slight nerf increase cooldown after victor downs a survivor to three uh, so like now if he victor downs a teammate you have a little bit more time to go and kick him if he downs your teammate or something and uh, twins is pretty strong but again she's still gonna be boring to play against and i'll see two play i don't really enjoy playing her that much unknown is getting a new hud to display teleport okay so like just a better hud and movement speed now decreases sooner when charging your power oh so that's a nerf actually so like now when you start to ready your power your movement speed's gonna be like slowed down like right away i think this is what it means increase teleport 
recovery speed. So th that's a nerf. Adjustment to blurry photo and other add-ons. So they're nerfing the unknown. I don't know why. I actually maybe haven't gone against a good unknown, but I thought they were a decent killer. So I, I thought they were like relatively healthy. I had counterplay against them. Um, I don't know. I thought they were fine. But overall, I would say mostly, mostly positive unless I missed something. But it looks like it leans a little bit in favor of Survivor. Other than the distortion nerf or change, people are going to be pretty pissed about that. But that Blood Rush, that one I'm excited about using Blood Rush. And yeah, that's pretty much it, everyone. Thanks for watching.